them. It really is just about time. The time to compound the consistency of these new choices. Simple as that. But here's the big warning. This is the pitfall. This is what will cause you to fail and blunder more than anything else. At the same time, if you master this skill, you can beat anybody in this room to this stage, to the top of this organization. This is the one attribute that when anybody asks me what I would attribute my success to, this is it. Here's what it is. It's not how fast you start. See, at the start of the race, everybody's there. Right here, when you all go back to your markets, everybody's going to be excited. It really doesn't, it's not going to be about what you do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Now, I encourage you to go after it, but that's not ultimately going to determine where you end up to get to this stage. It's not how fast you start. It's how long you last. Because in the, re in the end, you've heard the old fable, the tortoise and the hare, right? Well, the hare is more experienced, the hare is faster, the hare is more skilled, but the tortoise beats it every time because it's relentlessly consistent. And you will win every single time if you just stay the course. Consistency wins every time. Now I want to give you one last strategy. I get asked all the time after this, is there any way to speed this up a little bit? And the reality is time has to take its course. But there is one strategy that can accelerate your success, okay? That can get you far beyond the pack, to have you break out from the peloton, so to speak. And here's what it is. I learned it when I first got into real estate. I went to a seminar. It's kind of a theme there. And I was the only guy that asked the lecturer to lunch. And so we went to lunch and I sat down with him and I'm only 20 years of age right now, okay? And I'm in the real estate business and just getting started. And I said, tell me what I got to do to be successful. I says, I'm willing to do anything. He says, are you really, really willing to do anything? I said, I'm willing to do anything. He says, then I'm going to give you the ultimate key to your success. I'm like, I'm ready. He said, go fail. I said, what do you, what do you mean go fail? He says, yeah, go fail fast, go fail a lot, and go fail really big. And I thought, man, isn't the whole idea of success avoiding failure? And he said, no, 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 it's quite the opposite. The key to your success is your failure. And then he gave me this quote from Thomas Watson, who used to be the president of IBM, where he said, your key to success is massive failure. Now, don't just hear that as some motivational line. Let that marinate on your brain a little bit. The key to success is massive failure. What if that's true? Now, based on the look on your faces, same look I had on my face, okay? So he explained this to me a little bit. He took a cocktail napkin and he drew out this analogy. He said, look, on one side of the pendulum is joy, love, happiness, and success. The other side is pain, rejection, sadness, and failure. He says, look, if, if you just stand still, you won't experience any pain, rejection, sadness, and defeat, but you won't experience any joy, love, happiness, and success either. He says, you, you know, you can't live under a bridge. Eventually, you got to go and mix amongst people. So what ends up happening is, is people are only willing to experience so much rejection and so much pain and so much defeat, and so they only experience so much joy, so much love. And they end up just operating in what is called this comfort zone. And if anything is outside that comfort zone, they're like, oh, no, no. And they just stay right here in this comfort zone. But they complain, why don't I have more success? Why don't I have more love? Why don't I have more happiness in my life? He said, so you can't push the pendulum on the side of success. He must have went to a Jim Rohn seminar. What you pursue will elude you. He said, the only side of the pendulum you can control is the side of pain, rejection, sadness, and defeat. So your job is to go push the pendulum as high, as wide, and as fast as you can on the side of pain, rejection, sadness, and defeat. He says, I promise you, it'll swing in equal proportion on the other side. So I just took his word for it. So I just pursued it with reckless abandon, okay? So here I was. 
just getting started in real estate. And I said, where can I go get as much failure, pain, sadness, and defeat as much as possible, right? So there are these things called expired listings. These are people who had their house on the market with another realtor. It didn't sell. And all these realtors call them at the same time. And then the homeowner gets really mad and angry and upset. And when you call those people, they just let you have it with all this anger, madness, and being upset. So lots of pain and rejection to be had there. I did that every morning. Then when I was done with that, I went and called on these people who are the scariest people on the planet to a realtor. And these are people who are called for sale by owners or FISBOs. These people hate realtors so much they wouldn't even think of listing their house with one of them. You go knock on their door and they open the door. Lots of pain, rejection, and sadness to be had there. Then I would park my car at the end of a street, take a little notepad, put 50 check boxes on it. And I would just go door to door knocking, do you plan on buying or selling a house in the next six months? Door would slam in my face. People yell at me from across the street. Kids would throw rocks. It would start raining. Every time somebody rejected me, how did I feel? Happy, one more checkbox from being done. This stuff sucks, right? Then I would go back to my office and 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. is what I called money time. And that is when I just cold called people on the phone. And it was the perfect time because they were all home having dinner. And people love to be interrupted on the phone when they're having dinner, right? Lots of pain and rejection to be had there. So what happened was, because all day, every day, I was just subjecting myself to constant pain, constant rejection, and constant failure, as he promised, the pendulum swung in equilibrium on the other side. In 90 days, in an office of 44 agents, not knowing anything about the real estate business, I had more new listings and more new escrows than the entire office combined. After the end of the first year, was doing more than the number two and number three agent in the office, number one in the city, number one in the county the next year. And it all had to do with this strategy, which was out failing everybody else around me. Now, even to this day, even to this day, if I get to the end of the month and I've not had some embarrassing defeat, rejection, or failure, I'm mad at myself. Why? Because I want more success than I have right now. Well, what is the key to that? More failure. So all you cushy, comfy, successful circle of champions, now's the time to push that pendulum even higher and wider. More failure, more defeat, more rejection. I want you to change your mindset about failure, about rejection, about defeat. I want you to learn to love it. I got to the point where I loved failure. I mean, I sought it. I, every day I pursued more and more. And the more I got, the more I celebrated it. You see, when you turn fear into fun, fear no longer has a grip on you. Here's what I know about you. Here's what I know. <clears throat> the only thing stopping you from being more successful, from realizing your potential, because your potential is so much greater than your current life, the only thing stopping you is fear. It's fear. And when you turn fear into fun, you release that potential. You are unstoppable. Nothing can stop you. So here's what I want you to do when you go back on Monday. Don't write out the number of new people you can recruit in the business, the number of new products that you can sell. Instead, I want you to create a hundred no club. Who can get to a hundred no's the fastest? Have a competition and then see who wins. And then there's a booby prize, which is who has the most embarrassing, ugly, heart-wrenching story of defeat or embarrassment. And then that person you carry around on your shoulders and celebrate them. Okay, because here's what happens. What you resist persists. What you step into dissipates. Once you step into the thing you once feared, it dissipates. And now you can finally live up to the potential that you, you were been given by God but are not living as you were meant to live. Look at this guy, the ultimate failure. His personal motto, motto is 
screw it, let's do it. If you fall flat on your face, pick yourself up and try again. This is a guy worth $4 billion. The only thing different between you and Richard Branson is he is a much bigger failure than you are. Simple as that. Eleanor Roosevelt said it this way, do something every day that scares you. At the end of every day, that's the question I ask myself. Did I do something today that scared me? Because if I did, I push that pendulum just a little bit and I'm gonna see the reward on the other side of that swing. The last thing I wanna encourage you to do is, you've been to conferences before, you've made decisions before, you've made resolutions before, you've set goals before, but this time, this time I want you to draw a line in the sand, a figurative line in the sand. Before you get up from your chair, I want you to draw a line in the sand. And this time I want you to say, this is it. If there's one attribute of the greatest successful people that I know, it's this sense of resolve. I will do it or I will die trying. Because when you go back, you're gonna be faced with your mountain in life, building your ACN business, getting to the circle of champions at the top. And you're gonna start climbing it and you're gonna be struggling as you climb it and people are gonna come out of the woodwork and go, what are you doing climbing mountains? You don't know how to climb mountains. Look, you have a good job. You're lucky to even have a job in this economy. Get off that mountain before you hurt yourself. I'm here to try to protect you. And you're gonna to have to look them in the eye and go, you see this mountain? This is my mountain. I'm going to the top. You'll climb a little bit further and people who say they love you and support you will come out and say, wait a minute. I, I, I read a little something about that mountain. I think that mountain's a pyramid, right? That mountain, there's, that, that's, that's a scammy mountain. Now, I'm trying to protect you. I'm just trying to be your friend here. People on Facebook will come out of the woodwork and you're gonna have to look them in the eye and you say, you see this mountain? I'm going to the top. And then as you start to ascend and you're almost at the summit, this is what cracks me up. People out of the woodwork will go, okay, okay. If you're so intent on climbing mountains, you should climb this mountain because this mountain is better. Our compensation plan is faster. This is the better plan for you. And you're gonna to have to look each of those people in the eye and say, you see this mountain? This is my mountain. And you're either gonna see me waving from the top or laying dead on the side. I am not coming back. With that sense of resolve, nothing can stop you. ACN, I love you. Great to be with you. Thank you guys.